Hello, everybody. It's April Perry and Jonathan Baylor back with another episode of The Sane Show. How are you, Jonathan? I'm doing great, April. We got our matching Sane <laughs> shirts on, so how could yes. I not be doing good? I know. I'm just on my tiptoes. So people can see that I am totally sane. I am loving my Sane t-shirt. And we, it's so excited. Great color, great reminder to eat sane, be sane. I love it. <laughs> so can other people get these shirts now too? They can. Yeah, they can absolutely get these these shirts. Just click on the store link at the, the top of the sanesolution.com website okay. and you can rock all sorts of sane goodness. <laughs> and you guys can all match like me and Jonathan, which is so fun. Actually, it's a really comfortable shirt. And for ladies shirts, they don't always fit right. This one fits perfect. So love it. Okay. And today we're talking about what... Jonathan and April actually eat. Now, <laughs> Jonathan, I know you've kind of been hesitant to talk about some of this before because you are like super, super sane. You're Mr. Sane. Um, but I think what's gonna be fun is we're gonna talk about how I eat sanely in a family context, how Jonathan eats sanely with he and his wife, Angela, and as the founder of Sane Solution. And then hopefully people who are listening will be able to come up with some ideas that will work really well in their lives too. Sound good? That sounds great. And I think what you're going to see in common, hopefully between April and myself, and then can manifest in your own life is that sane is a set of principles. As we know, right? It's not eat exactly this at exactly this time. And you must do this with these checklists. And if you don't do this, you're a failure and you're not sane at all. It's more a set of principles and guidelines. And then you customize your sanity based on your goals. So April has certainly different goals than I do, and we both probably have different goals than what you do. So again, please see this as some examples and then create your own beautiful, brilliant sanity in accordance with that. Well, I think that's a really great place to start as far as talking about what are our goals. So Jonathan, why don't you start out and share when you're planning your menu and when you're looking at your day and thinking about what you're eating, what goals do you have in your mind? I don't think I've ever asked you this question before convenience and and efficacy are probably <laughs> the number one criteria just off the top of my head and cost effectiveness because i'm a very cost sensitive person okay uh, and that's always just been remember my background is i used to be a trainer i was very into fitness i was very into natural bodybuilding athletic sports so and i'm an engineer by trade so my, the the food as fuel to be very clear i love eating i love we, my wife and i our only vacation is we go on cruises simply because we just love to eat so eat. much so so let's be clear that i love delicious good food uh, however i do a very um i'm either gonna like sit down and really enjoy what i'm eating or it's a total side thought and it's more about just functional fueling my body so if for me it's either extreme it's either i'm sitting down and i'm really going to savor this or purely functional does that distinction okay. make sense yeah no i think that sounds good and i think also as far as the spectrum goes your goal not only as someone who wants to be healthy but you're a leader out here in the nutrition industry so as far as like 100% sane and 0% sane, where would you say you are on that spectrum for what your goal is with the quality of food you eat? I feel very blessed, April, because I don't try to be sane. Let me let me be, so if you look at what I eat, it is, very, it is optimal sanity. But what's okay. cool about that is I think if you ask someone who's been, for example, a vegan for, for 20 years, they don't try to be 100% vegan. That's just how they <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I, okay. I don't I don't sit down and say, how can I maximize my sanity today? I've I've eaten and it. enjoyed sane foods for so long that it is it's just like I just eat a lot of clams and oysters like most people <laughs> eat popcorn and chips. Like that's just what I do. I don't know. I am not there yet. I'm actually excited <laughs> to talk more about that. OK, so so Jonathan clearly has he's he's saying he, he's Mr. Sane. That's what he eats. It's not something he even tries to do. He just does it, which is great. OK, so my goals, I am so grateful I don't have to starve anymore. I feel like number one, my goal is to eat food that 
fuels me, that fills me up so that I can just go about doing the things that are more important. And so in my life right now, I've got four children who are all living in my home, 16 down to turning nine on Monday. So I've got kids that are getting older. I work with my husband. He works across the desk from me. We're together all day long. I'm doing projects I love. I'm working on my book. I teach programs. We teach classes online. I love to be able to engage and teach and, and I specialize in productivity. So for me, I want quick foods that taste good, that fill me up so I can just live my mission and I don't have to worry about counting calories because I have got all kinds of calorie counting journals, <laughs> boxes I could show you, and apps, things that I recorded my whole life. And I basically lived from the time I was nine years old until two years ago when I was 36, where I was hungry most all the time because I was trying, or I was either hungry or I was full of food I shouldn't have been eating that wasn't good for me. And that was awful. So my goal now is super healthy. Like, I mean, I, I'm not where Jonathan is, where every single thing I eat is saying, there's probably still some stuff on the spectrum that's not 100%, but I would probably say I'm about 98%. Like I'm really, really close, but, but I'm not optimal with things like clams and stuff like that. So maybe that flips me down, but, um, but I love it. So I think we're both on the same page though. Eating good quality food fills you up, makes you feel good. 100%. And the thing that's cool is I've noticed, and I think a lot of people that have gone sane have noticed, and probably you've noticed this as well, April, is that our tastes change as what we eat changes, mm -hmm. right? We become used to the foods we do eat. So again, yeah. I, I don't want to make it sound like Oh my gosh, Jonathan does 100% sane eating all the time. That's so amazing. I mean, I've I've tried I tried, for example, to experiment with eating more starches to help with workouts, yeah. and I didn't like it. I had lost mm -hmm. my taste for starches. I was I'm like, oh, I'm too full to eat my macadamia nuts. I don't like this. And you know, so so <laughs> it, once you become used to something, it really becomes a lot easier. So I just I think that's an important yeah. Thing. No, thanks for sharing that. And the other thing I'll add too is that I've even tried to incorporate some insane food into my life, which I know probably sounds like awful, but let me tell you why. Because as I've been with family members who really like to eat, you know, me some fried foods or some sweets, and I'm like, well, I could have a serving here or there, you know, I'm I eat mostly healthy food. But what I found starting to happen is anytime I eat something that's not good for me is I seriously, I'm sick. Like I'm up in the night sick and I can't do it anymore. So now what's actually kind of fun is that, which may sound weird, but let me just stick with me here because it's fantastic, is that when I like, if I'm sitting in front of a huge chocolate cake or a big thing of fried foods, there's not even a temptation. It's not even like, oh, if I you know, could just cheat a little bit, I could have that. It's like, that'll make me sick. I don't even want it. So my desire for anything that's bad for my body, it's just gone. It's like, I'm almost repulsed by it. Like, I just don't want it. And, and I don't feel deprived at all. I'm like, I just have other better foods I'll have later. And that's made a big deal, difference for me. I think one of the coolest things about that, April, is that some people might hear that and they might say, well, is is something, has something strange happened to April's body where before she could eat fried foods and she would feel great. So now she eats fried foods and she feels terrible. Like has her, has her body lost its resiliency to fried <laughs> foods? And what- Or what how sad. <laughs> I know, right? So what, what we've actually noticed is that unfortunately so many people, and, and the data actually bears this out, so many people- Henry David Thoreau had a saying of, of people who live in quiet desperation. And so many of us may have, we may think that this low grade headache or this low grade state of low energy and mild depression and lethargy is, is, is normal. So when you actually experience that as not the default, when you experience this, this up, this, this more uh, empowered state of eating and being, when you eat those other foods, they're not actually making you feel worse than they used to make you feel, but the contrast between how you normally feel and how those foods make you feel, the contrast is just so much larger because your baseline has gotten so much better. Yeah, absolutely. And all I can say about that is this is the change that I am grateful for every day because 
before, yeah, if I w- went to a birthday party, I was seriously like sitting on my hands so I wouldn't eat the Doritos or so I wouldn't have the cake or so I wouldn't eat whatever was there. Or I had to talk myself through it. I go to a restaurant. I'm not going to eat all the bread on the table because I would eat like six rolls or whatever. I-, I had to purposely psych myself up to not eat. And now it's completely opposite. I just love healthy food and I feel so good. And I just, I, I can't even tell you how much has changed me. So So that's where we are, but I didn't necessarily start that way. I started by just eating a little bit of healthy food, trying some new vegetables, putting in my servings. I started really slowly, but it's been two years now and it's only been the past few months that I've noticed that my desire for anything insane is gone. So I feel like it's this process and I love how Jonathan always emphasized progress over perfection. (laughs) Progress over perfection. I never had to put myself down for not eating perfectly. Jonathan didn't ask for my measurements before we got on any podcast. I mean, it was always done in such a very loving, helpful, encouraging, take care of the whole person way that that the, the journey has been easy and fun. And I'm so happy where I am. And speaking of encouraging, April, one one thing that I think is really important for everyone to understand as they hear this is that April and I aren't special. And I promise that to you because you might be hearing, oh, and that, you know, Jonathan and, and April think broccoli is delicious. That's crazy. They're crazy They're people. <laughs> um, I, you know, look at any other culture in the world. For example, what is eaten in China is very different from what's eaten in Africa, which is very different than what's eaten in Russia. So there is human beings can find very diverse things to be delicious. Human beings like to eat what they're used to eating, period. There are things eaten in other cultures, which those cultures love. Go Go to Hawaii and try poi. Hawaiians love it. They eat it their whole life. If you're not a Hawaiian and you try to eat poi or or vita vegemin, vegemite. <laughs> vegemite, yes, right? in Australia. <laughs> so it, it, this isn't like people who like poi aren't special or better than other people. They're just used to eating poi. So as you get used to eating sane, I promise you, you will enjoy it just as much as you enjoy eating insanely. And that's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so should we just dive into it? Should we just start with a typical day? Because this is, we've been getting emails like crazy, people saying, just walk me through a day. Tell me what exactly are you eating? So Jonathan, even if what you're eating is weird, I want you to tell us the truth, okay? <laughs> and I'll do the same, we'll just share. Because when you, when you cut, when it all is broken down, you can eat a variety of things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's tons of sane options. We're just going to share what we eat specifically because people want to (laughs) know. So I eat, I eat like if you ask any professional athlete or fitness competitor, how they eat, what they'll probably say is they have seven meals that they just rotate depending Mm -hmm. on what they like to eat. So I, these are not breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm full, but generally here's the, here's the meals that I eat. I eat hard boiled eggs with some salt and some hot sauce and a, a vegetable smoothie. That's usually a type of meal For I consume. breakfast or anytime? When I ha- when I feel like eating eggs so in a smoothie. So you're just gonna list seven meals and they can have it any time of day. <laughs> exactly, that's okay. exactly right. I, I had I had those hard boiled eggs this morning for my first okay. meal and I had them last night as my last meal because I had a craving for, I had a hankering for some hard boiled eggs. Okay, now tell me hot sauce, just like regular hot sauce, like what would be on a table at a restaurant? I don't. Probably not, because what's on the table at the restaurant probably has high fructose corn syrup in it. Okay, this so is... what do you do? Well, I, I it's crazy. I really like hot things. So I think this is called Mad Dog 357 hot sauce that's sold okay. on the internet with a warning on it, because it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, and how many hard-boiled eggs are you eating? I, until I'm full. So like, how many would that be? Come on. It's, well, I don't know because I'm what it's, this is a form of, ca- now we're egg counting instead of calorie <laughs> counting. Um, no, I'll probably eat four hard boiled eggs okay. and then I might, yeah. So, and, and do I wanna, you eat the yolks? I do. And then okay. I'll usually, I'll usually to get to 30 grams of protein, I'll probably throw in a couple desiccated beef liver tablets to, uh, to get to the 30 grams of protein. Okay, seriously, I eggs. need to, wait, 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 we got to back up. Wait, wait. 
what desiccated beef tablets tell me I, I, I I mean, we've, only, we've only got 20 minutes so i mean this is why asking me what i eat goes down rabbit holes. oh my gosh no okay i won't go down every rabbit hole but seriously you've got to tell me what is that okay so we got to back up here first because okay. eggs remember are a whole food fat yes. so if i eat four eggs if you're really savvy with your sanity you say well jonathan that's only 24 grams of protein don't you need to eat 30 grams of protein per serving and that's yes what I was thinking. The answer is yes. So desiccated beef liver is just desiccated means dried. So when you when you okay. open a, a powder or a can of anything and you see those little packages that say yeah. don't eat this, yeah. that's the desiccant. It keeps moisture from building up. So okay. when you say anytime you've if you've ever eaten like a spirulina powder or a wheatgrass powder or any kind of powdered anything, they've desiccate they've they're they've taken the water out they've taken the moisture out so desiccated okay. beef liver just means you take grass-fed usually grass-fed argentinian beef liver because i find liver to be not so tasty and they take it and take all they desiccate it down into a little tablet form and each little tablet's about two grams of protein and you okay. just eat them like pills okay all right keep going <laughs> so there you go so anytime my anytime my main dish doesn't give me the 30 grams of protein i usually oh, yeah. desiccate my beef liver up to uh, up to 30 grams of protein hey, that's actually really helpful keep going <laughs> all right uh, another type of meal i eat is a is a smoothie that is made of chia seeds coconut flour shredded unsweetened coconut cinnamon uh, whey protein powder vanilla extract, peppermint oil extract, and some xylitol or erythritol. It's wow. like a creamy, okay. I put some undutched cocoa powder in there as well. It's a, it's a delicious, creamy, wonderful thing. And that has no vegetables in it. So then I would drink a vegetable smoothie as well. Is that recipe in your book or in your program? No, because it's more of an organic weird. thing that I, I think that it I made. sounds great. Okay, maybe you need to put that into your uh, saying your ignite program. I think yeah, that's so awesome. There are, there are things that are similar to it. There's chia seed cereals and things along those lines. But again, okay. a lot of what I eat is not as tasty as what <laughs> non Jonathan Baylor's would eat. Non Jonathan so. Baylor's. <laughs> Okay. I think they're delicious, but other people say that is disgusting. So. This is actually like super interesting. Okay, keep going. All right. The uh, other things that I eat are I eat salmon burgers and Pollock burgers from Costco. And I usually eat those with a frozen vegetable blend okay. that I get from Costco. And I eat three, two or three of those patties and then mm -hmm. a bunch of vegetables. Okay. I also eat a lot of just, I take tuna out of the can and I mix it with salsa and hot sauce and pepper. And then I'll drink a vegetable smoothie along with that. Okay. I also eat a, a chipino for, for a, a poor, a, a, a economically minded chipino. Chipino is a seafood stew. So I get canned okay. clams, canned oysters, canned wild caught salmon, canned tuna, canned mushrooms, canned artichokes, olives, a bunch of hot sauce, uh, all natural tomato paste, a bunch of seasonings. And I make giant bowls of that and freeze it. And okay, I eat that, okay. that stew on occasion. Okay. And that's pretty much. So you much. don't eat chicken. I accidentally am a pescatarian. I'm not intentionally a pescatarian, okay. but I actually don't buy, you can't buy meat. I used to get, I used to get, uh, beef over the internet, but it became yeah. a bit of a hassle with the company I was working with. So I don't oh, okay. do that anymore, but okay, <laughs> that's pretty much well, what I eat. So there you go. Okay. So now my meal seems super boring, Jonathan, after all that, I don't have anything like so exciting, but I'll share what I eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. All right. So typically the way I found with my life is that three meals a day, and then maybe a fourth meal or snack. That's typically what I've been doing. And so every morning I have eggs and egg whites and vegetables. So like this morning I had a whole sliced zucchini and some baby carrots. Um, well, the carrots I just ate while I was making the eggs. And then I just had sliced zucchini and I had egg whites and I didn't do any yolks. Actually, I don't really need it. That's okay, right? I can if I want. Do I need the yolks? No, I mean it's it's they're two different 
things. One is, you know, we focus on egg whites because they're a great source of protein. Whole eggs mm -hmm. are a whole food fat. So there's no, you can eat just eggs, you can eat just egg whites, you can eat a mixture of the two, depending on what your goals are for that meal. Okay. So that's just what I have for breakfast. And that usually will hold me tight until lunch. Um, but if I need a little snack, okay, I seriously, I just eat these whole cucumbers. I know it's so weird. Look, there's the end of my little cucumber. And my little puppy likes cucumbers too, so I share it with her and <laughs> give her little pieces. Um, so I'm you can find me with a whole pepper or a cucumber. I just have a lot of like random vegetables that I'll just eat, like apples. I don't know. My family thinks I'm a little weird, but I just will snack on vegetables. Or if I'm making a little vegetable platter for Eric and I to share, I'll actually slice things up and peel it and make it look nice and we'll have vegetables together. But that's usually good until lunch. And then for lunch, I usually do a tuna salad. So I get a can of tuna, some Greek yogurt, salt and dill, and then I make a huge salad. So I have romaine lettuce, tomatoes. I love to just sit and eat a really big salad. <laughs> I think it's fun and it's colorful. And I've been doing xylitol and red wine vinegar and just making a little dressing with that. And that's been really good. So that's huge. And sometimes I'll put some avocado in that or I'll have some raw almonds or um, something, but that's usually my lunch. Dinners, our kids help make dinners. So we plan them at the beginning of the week. We have a new calendar hanging in our fridge or on our kitchen wall that has little post-it notes with all the different meals we rotate. So right now we have about 14 meals we found that are like in within the same spectrum, you know, so we'll have like beef fajitas, but Aliyah and I do a fajita salad or we have a chicken dish with a seasoning and sometimes the other family members will use have rice with it and Ali and I do vegetables. So and we'll do salmon patties, um, eggplant, lasagna. We just have a whole bunch of different meals we rotate, but we do eat a lot of chicken because that's like the one thing that my whole family will eat with me. Um, they don't like fish very much. So I can do salmon patties, but the rest of the family doesn't like it. I like tilapia or I'll have some other fish, but that's about what we do. And then if I need a snack, um, I do make green smoothies. So the ones Jonathan taught me how to make with the uh, lemon juice and a few strawberries and a ton of spinach. And then I love Greek yogurt with natural peanut butter in it, some, some xylitol and um, some cinnamon and maybe some mini chocolate chips I'll put in there. And that's like my snack or that's like my ice cream, my Greek yogurt. So that's kind of a typical day for us. Well, I love that you brought up snacks, April, because I actually I didn't I didn't I, I remember now that I'm not on the spot. I remembered a few <laughs> other things that I guess you could qualify as snacks or side dishes. Uh, I, okay. I sometimes eat these as side dishes. So I will take that smoothie thing that I talked about that has the coconut and the chia seeds that also has unflavored gelatin in it. Forgive me, I forgot to. And it also has guar gum in it. Sometimes I'll take that, <laughs> I'll mix it with a bunch of ice and I'll make it into more of an ice cream. I also take that same basic recipe, but I take the shredded coconut out and I put eggs in and I bake it and it turns into a bread of sorts. Okay. And I and if I bake it for a long time, it's a crispy cracker type thing. And if I bake it for a shorter period of time, it's more almost like a bread pudding because it's coconut flour and coconut flour cooks a lot differently than than other yeah. flours. Right. I also eat uh, a lot of sane bars. <laughs> so okay. I, eat, yeah. okay. I eat a sane meal bar or two per day. And I mm -hmm. usually eat one cravings killer per day, always with a greens. I mean, green smoothies are how I get all my vegetables with okay. the exception of, I do eat a lot of red cabbage, like you eat okay. cucumbers, because I think it's delicious. Okay. And then I also eat uh, raw macadamia nuts and I really like Brazil nuts. So I okay. will eat those raw as well. Okay, all right. So I have a question for you because I mean, the so right now the foods that I'm eating, they fill me up. I enjoy eating them. I feel like I just don't even really think about it. And I, in all my clothes and I'm happy and I have tons of energy. But if I wanted to take things to the next level, or as you're hearing me talk about what I ate, what would you what would you throw in or change or like what would you suggest? I think you've achieved a healthy body weight set point for who you are and where you are at your life. So if you wanted to stray from what would be a healthy optimal range for someone at your, so let's be very clear here. We sometimes think that being thin equates to being healthy, and that's not actually true. All-cause mortality is higher 
with people who are classified as thin than people who are classified as overweight. Okay. So what you would need to do to be thin okay. in, in magazine terms is yeah. actually not necessarily even desirable from a health perspective. So if you okay. wanted to be unnaturally fit, okay. you would probably have to start taking some unnatural steps, which would require things like not only just increasing the quality of your food, but you would have to get more meticulous about the amount of that food you're eating, the amount of exercise you're getting, the amount of sleep you're getting, you'd have to start treating it a little bit more like mm -hmm. a professional would because you're expecting professional caliber results. Does that make okay. sense? Okay, okay, yeah, that does make sense. But would you recommend things like, oh, I would just replace chicken with things like clams or oysters? I mean, would there be a benefit to me knowing the goals that I have? that like, I'm pretty happy <laughs> I mean, just, just seeing where I am right now. But are there any other benefits besides just, oh, I want to look more like a fitness model. If my goal is just, is there any way I can um, decrease my risk of diabetes more? Or is there anything that would oh, help absolutely. me more? <laughs> you know, yes. what would you so, say? So the more we can move towards optimal sanity, there's no question that we're, in, we're decreasing our likelihood of developing any and all diseases that plague us today. I mean, just, just by way yeah. of example, we know there is a dose dependent relationship between the amount of omega threes you consume and the likelihood of certain neurological and cardiovascular problems. So for example, okay. salmon, which is higher than chicken and omega threes, chia seeds, flax seeds, the more seafood and omega three rich proteins and fats you can take in, those are, those are going to reduce your risk mm, okay. of any and all major diseases. So that's I, I that's I'm a huge fan of seafood, but also chia and flax. And then vegetables are not all created equal. Things yeah. like deep green leafy vegetables are way more nutrient dense than something like a romaine lettuce Carrots or zucchini. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, but but the, but yeah. here's the trade off though, April. Here's the trade off. As real as those benefits are, there are costs associated with stress and having to expend willpower. So the stress is as high of a predictor of certain diseases as the absence of certain nutrient nutrient components. So if you love eating chicken and it makes you happy and eating salmon makes you miserable and <laughs> depressed and stressed, then it would probably be a net negative for you to switch from chicken to salmon. Okay, no, I think that's helpful. And really what I'm seeing is that when I really do put that focus on what's maintainable, what helps me not feel stressed. But I balance that with continuing education, continually learning what's optimal, or let me just try something new with clams, or let me try something new with kale. I actually do kale and eggs most of the time. I would just add a kale this morning. And I do a lot more spinach and the spinach smoothies and spinach salads too. So I feel like you've taught me that a lot, how to use these deeper greens when I never did. I never bought kale and I rarely use spinach. And now I do that a lot more. So I feel like it's this balance. And I really appreciate you saying that because I always want to be learning and growing and doing things better, but I don't want to be so stressed out about it, thinking that there's some perfect ideal way I'm supposed to be looking or eating and that there's some external monitor telling me if I've achieved it or not, that I need to be able to really figure out, okay, inside, do I love what I'm eating? Am I feeling great? And do I know that with all the information that I've learned and I've been given that this is going to help me to live a long, healthy life, then I feel really good about that. April, I think you're spot on. And if there is a place, this is actually an area that SANE is going to be focusing on a lot more in the future, where you can most easily dial up your sanity, it's in the smoothie department because it's way easier to turbocharge yeah. smoothies because you just throw stuff in a blender and blend <laughs> it up rather than to be like, oh, let's change dinner and lunch. So I think SANE smoothies, and this is something we could talk about more in a future, uh, future show, okay. it, that is our number one lowest hanging fruit easiest way to take your sanity to the next level because it's way easier to just put a bunch of magic superfoods in a blender and drink them than it is to be like okay we're not gonna eat chicken anymore family <laughs> <laughs> right so i think that's a great great approach okay so that sounds like a good next action is for us to look at our diet look at what we're eating maybe as you've been listening to 
Jonathan and I just talk about what's working for us, sit, sit down and really think about one thing that you could do that could work better for you. And if smoothies is one place where you could find that way to improve, that might be a good place to start. Any other thoughts you would share? Just make sure, and this is more, I guess, a stretch goal, is both April and I, I, one thing I am proud that we're doing is we are consciously eating and we're choosing our foods based on our goals. I think just that consciousness, just saying, are the food choices I'm making taking me further away from my goals or closer mm -hmm. to my goals? That right there, just consciously eating, eating consciously and deliberately can have a profound impact on your health. So if you could just do that even weekly, I think that would really help you. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Jonathan. It was fun to be able to go through our menus. I loved getting a behind the scenes image of what you're eating because it's really fun and entertaining, I might add. Those of you who are here with us, thank you so much for be being part of the same community. We hope you have a wonderful day and remember to stay sane.